guys. So um, I got this on 6, 4, 23 at 12, 36 in the morning until 2 in the morning. It's quite a lot. Um, and I was asked to integrate a dream into it. So this is going to be a little long. I'll try to read fast. <laughs> all right. So um, again, I don't typically pay attention to the numbers and all of that, but this time I was drawn to this. So it was 12, 36 when it began. And in Hebrew, um, that means a breaking or dividing of something in half. And then in Greek, it means to carry over or lead through to pass time or to lead, send a cross. Okay, so keep that in mind when we're hearing this. Hear the word of the Lord. The time has come, the time is here. Many will see, my bold will come to the earth. They will not care what others think. Their goal only to represent me. The faithful spared sustained in the war will be my living proof that I care for my own and that I care for those with true faith. How I will provide will shake those left to see. It will defy logic. This will open hearts to understand that all of the ways of the evil one has told the world of how God is, is wrong. Those who have forgotten to ask why and how, those thoughts will return. There will be an obvious contrast between true love and evil. My people will be benefactors of true love and protection. The miracles will not be able to be explained away in other ways. There will be no other way to explain a soul home standing without damage in an area ruined by bombs. There will be no other way to explain a home with lights and water when the sources of those have been shut off. There will be no way to explain provisions for others when the sources of food have been shut off. My people will be spared. My people will provide for others. See who will see something different. When my people explain that God provides for those with true faith, my bold love will be evident as will the horrors of the kings. People will see. My bold ones, my bright ones, they shall return to share the gospel. They will not have any man, beast, or form of spiritual darkness that will be able to harm them. Anointed with my power, they will tread the earth changing people. They will heal. They will love. They will give the option to follow my son. People will be drawn to them. Most because they have seen my provisions through the faithful. Much like people were drawn to my son, some will be drawn to hear my words, others will be drawn in hopes to be healed. Large numbers of people will come and be healed and will become part of my family. Our numbers will grow quickly as I draw my own to me. This is unexpected. The kings will not be happy. In their plans, they will not believe. All of the methods they planned were flawed to take the people, to cut off their hope, to control by fear, starvation, and homelessness. They will not believe that these efforts are being threatened by the faithful and the anointed, all who are agents and willing vessels for me. This will cause all of them to look for people that they deem a threat to their plan. Rest assured, all of my servants will be safe. But the bold ones, the anointed, will be hotly pursued. They will be looked for and chased after. Traps set in fire, groups with weapons, teams of people in anger. No thing a man can make or try against these bold ones will be effective. They will not be affected by germ warfare or tools of war. They will walk through fire. They will be able to help others to safety. They will have the same protections Jesus had from me. He was able to walk right through a crowd without notice. He was able to speak words and stop the pursuers. The bold ones will also have my power flowing through them as defense and offense. They will not be derailed. They will be sent in teams, all able to do the same. However, each fitted with special strengths unique to them. They will be a force nothing can stop. All traps man sets will turn out to be platforms to share my gospel. This will befuddle and paralyze the enemy. 
In a very short time, my bold ones will change the majority of hearts. Scales will fall off eyes, ears will open. Many in error will repent. Those that reject my bold ones, whoa. Rejecting my bold ones means rejecting me. And we'll be left for the great tribulation who reject me. My wrath will be full on those left. No one has seen the wonders I am about to do. My love will spill over to all who will soften their hearts. This is where the Holy Spirit will shine more than ever before. Only those who accept and embrace the Holy Spirit will benefit. After the chaos and after the war, those without my protections, like the faithful will have, will be broken, ready to hear, ready to have my Holy Spirit, ready for my son to rule their life. All that they used to value will have been stripped away by the kings. The war is just part of the plan of the kings. They will also be trying to control all the people as a result. They will offer shelter and food, but in these places, they will require very strict rules. They will demand all shots be up to date in order for safe housing. The shots they will require will be filled with things bodies of humans will not benefit from. They have in place plans for those with homes standing that a forced housing of other people who are homeless will be allowed to be with them in some areas. They will also have in place strategic governmental agents to try and move people from areas. Be warned, if you move out, you will not return. If you trust me, I will provide. If you trust man, you will be upon in their goals to decide where people live, making some places off limits. They will claim this is for safety. They will encourage this for sanitation. But their end goal is to move all populations to spaces they deem controllable. The safe cities, the ones they direct people to, will have the ability to monitor everything. These spaces will be free spaces at first. But after the Antichrist arises, each city the kings pushed the people into will become closed prison communities. Passage will not be allowed out without approved reason. Food will not be allowed without the Antichrist mark of the beast. People out of these cities will be outcasts. They will be the rebels and the hiders. But these cities will exist by the willful relocation of the residents. At first, this will be for those who do not hear my voice. Those who do not dance to the tune of the Holy Spirit. Those that trust man. Those that see my miracles and are with me will be guided to safe spaces, taken away from evil men, and be put into small communities of believers. They will pray for one another. They will be close like family. Unlikely friends in the past will be close because of me. As the anointed move about positively affecting people, and as the evil kings push forth with their plans, my love will be taking over. The few believers now, the few faithful on earth that will be used to be my vessels, will start a powerful source of love by being my vessels. This will grow as the anointed move about. When the time has come, I will send forth for all of my own and the worldwide rapture will occur. This will be a devastating event. The world will be getting back to normal and millions will disappear off the earth disturbing industry, economics, and every country on earth. No one can calculate the impact of this, not even those filled with the most wisdom in man's ways. Each country will be in a crisis. This is when the Antichrist will arise. He will offer solutions. At first, it will seem to be a democratic process. People will crave this leadership and willingly agree to have him rise up. But soon after, he will change. Just as the false messiah is a chameleon and will entrap, the Antichrist is clever and will willfully lie to tell the people what they wish to hear, having no intent to attain the goals. The Antichrist, for most, is to be feared. But for those who find me after the worldwide rapture and when the Antichrist turns his mood, those that are mine shall not fear this beast of a man. They will trust me 
with more intense belief than all generations before them. The Antichrist will, of course, enforce that no other religions will be able to exist, only the worship of his idols, paganism. But mine will have nothing to do with this. They will be fugitives of the law, just as Daniel or Shadrach. They will be marked for collection and killing, just like Esther and my people. Many will hide, many will be safe. Some will be caught and sacrificed for the Antichrist. But I will show mercy to them, and they will not feel the pain. When the mark of the beast comes, those that take it will be eternally changed. Those who take it will be stripped of everything good. No ability to love, no ability to heal, no ability to forgive. They will be filled with hatred. They will be filled with deception. They will be filled with lust. Lust of money, food, sensual needs and desires. They will lack any moral compass. Now at this point, as I'm writing down all these words, then I was told the dream that I had back in April that is called right after the rapture, I was supposed to put this inside the prophecy. So I'm going to tell the dream and what I'm told to talk about that. And then I'm going to come back and finish this prophecy. So hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is after the rapture dream. I got this 427, 23. There's two verses that go with it. Job um, 5, 15 to 13. He catches the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the cunning comes quickly upon them. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope at noontime as if it were night. He saves the needy from the sword and from the mouth of the mighty and from their hand. And then Isaiah 11:11, 11, 11, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left. Okay, so here's the dream. The rapture had be, had occurred moments before and it was dark. It was like very, very dark, okay? It was such a thick darkness and it was clear from what I was seeing, no one expected this. And this, this darkness was so dark, there was not any light at all and there was no joy. Like there was a, a feeling of evil in it, okay? There were no Christians left on the earth. All the true believers had been raptured. Then I witnessed massive changes occurring. The one I first saw was a man. He was wicked, deeply entrenched in Satanism before this time. He went through a transformation similar to Beauty and the Beast at the end of the movie, except it was in reverse. Instead of going from beast to a man, he was going from a normal man to a changed man in this new way I'm going to explain. The transition took over the man and it was clear that he was in a significant amount of pain as it was occurring to him. He was jerking and rolling on the ground and wincing in pain. His hair turned white in an instant. His eyes became golden. His skin became leathery and wrinkled. He hunched over a bit. His gait did not have the ease of walking typically seen. It was more like a typical fairy tale giant that would thunder along with slow, purposeful steps. So then at this point in the dream, it was explained to me that as in God's kingdom, where gray or white hair exemplifies a person's righteousness, in Team S's kingdom, white hair represents deep mastery over wickedness. Then I saw the transformation continue in the pitch black of this man's home. His body became very stiff and achy. He was now going to be in constant pain without God's grace to remove pain that is restored during sleep. He also took on a different countenance and I understood that all good was gone and he was completely filled with the highest levels of pain, anger, hate, selfishness, etc. Everything bad overtook him. He was walking evil personified. I saw another. He was not as deeply entrenched in wickedness as the first man. He also went through a transition, but it was not as painful or dramatic as the first man I saw. He had some highlights of white hair, but it was not an entire head full. His eyes did not transition to gold. He had a melody he was humming. Although he was in pain and he was changed somewhat, it seemed that he was not changed nearly at the same level as the man filled with wickedness. Then there were some who were fearful and they were in misery and in darkness. 
but they did not have any hair or eye color change. They did have increased levels of pain though. Some of them were repentant, others cried out to God for the first time. A deep fear was their most prominent trait. Some were just in awe and stunned from the understanding that things could actually be so horrible. Their bodies looked pretty much like they did before this event. Then I had this knowing in the dream, I was told, that if a person had a melody in their heart at all, then they had the hope of becoming a rebel or a hider as this quick transition of the world was upon them, meaning they were not deeply wicked in heart and they were not aligned with the devil. This was shown in a test. If a person could tap a musical rhythm with their fingers from a song that they still had a melody left within them. Okay, so then the dream picks back up. I saw a white haired and wicked man and he had no ability to tap or hear any melodies at all. And he could not tap a rhythm for any reason because they were stripped away from him. Everything good was taken in the darkness and music source is joy. So he did not have the ability to hear it or to you, you know, listen to it, sing it, nothing. Without joy, he lacked the ability to copy or create a rhythm. Once you were in a wicked state with white hair and gold eyes, you were in an irreversible state and a slave to the Antichrist. The ones with the white hair went out into the community to seek those who had the ability to drum rhythm with their fingers, those without pure white hair. The ones with pure white hair were sent to round up all the rest. Observing these changes, I sent people out on missions to find those with a melody left in their heart and to bring them to safe houses. Many of these became the hiders, fully dependent on God and spared through the wrath that would soon occur. We had a short window of time to bring as many people as possible to safe houses before the mark of the beast would become law. So that's the dream. Okay, so I was pretty surprised when I went to look for pictures and I did not even have any concept how deeply entrenched this gold eyes and sometimes the white hair and gold eyes is into the media. These guys are not playing around. Okay, so after this dream though, I was given Isaiah 59 and then the day that I was given these prophetic words and then told to share this dream with you within it. Um, I was told I need to read the entire chapter of Isaiah 59 to you. And then there's a few verses at the end. And then we go back into the prophecy. Okay. So Isaiah 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls for justice. No one does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. They hatch viper's eggs and weave the spider's web. He who eats of their eggs dies. And from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. Their webs will not become garments nor will they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are the thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, nor does the righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as at twilight. We are dead men in desolate places. We all growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and your sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and our iniquities we know them. 
in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off, for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no justice. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, and it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head, and he put the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Accordingly, he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. The coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and the glory, his glory and rising of the sun. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion, and those who turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. Okay, so hopefully you can see the connections, but in case not, I'm going to point them out, okay? We've got here in um, verses 3 through 8, this lays out many of their sins, okay? I'm not going to reread. You can look it up. Then in verse 6, it talks about because of their sin, this is why they're separated from God. So all these people left behind, that's why they're left behind, because of their sin. They had multiple opportunities to repent. They did not. They did not want to at that point. Then verses 9 and 10 talk about... Um, identifying literal darkness and then paralleling that with spiritual darkness because they're going to have a physical darkness that they're existing in but that's because of their spiritual darkness then verse 11 is a literal and physical transformation that parallels with that dream so it's like we all growl like bears we mourn like doves i mean they're literally turning into like a form of humanity that we don't even understand. Then verse 12, that's when it starts talking about those who repent. Or at the end of verse 12, it says, and as for our iniquities, we know. Then 13 through 15 shows that they identify and understand what they did wrong. And then those who are able to repent do so. Who's not able to repent? Those that are fully wicked. They put 100% into um, Satanism. I don't think they're coming out of that. Then we've got um, verse 15, it talks, it identifies that the Lord hears them and accepts their plea for forgiveness because it says, then the Lord saw it, okay? Verses 16 through 20 is God's declaration that he is going to come back and he will defend them, which is going to happen, right? Then we've got verse 21, which is the promise to that remnant. It says that they will have his words in them. And remember in other prophecies, they can memorize the Bible like none of us, like they're going to know the whole thing backwards and forwards because they're crazy good at that. Then I was told to share a couple of these verses with you. This clarifies also what is shown in the dream. Okay. So thinking back to the darkness part, this occurs just after the rapture. And this is clearly explained in several places of the Bible. Plus I have a prophecy out there that talks about all these weird numbers and times. It relates to this. So Amos 8, we're going to start in verse 9. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day says the Lord God that I will make the sun go down at noon and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. Okay. So these people are expecting light and it's dark and it's not normal dark. It's like Egypt dark where it's like you can feel it and it's like not good. Okay. So how do we know that this is related to this time period? So we have to go backwards and look. So if we look back at verse two, okay, verse nine, that noontime darkness, it says this occurs right after the rapture. Notice the entire chapter is about the basket of summer fruit. Look at verse two, it says, he said, Amos, what do you see? He's like, oh, a basket of summer fruit. And the Lord says, well, the end has come upon my people. I will not pass by them anymore. Okay, woo, that's serious in its first, you know, at first take, that's very serious, but let's, define what this means to us okay the basket of summer fruit i've already been told that the halfborns are the first harvest so that means the end of the first harvest is rapture and i've already been told the second harvest is the rebels when they turn into hiders 
So that's your second harvest, okay? Meaning, the basket of summer fruit, that's the first harvest. The second harvest is a fall harvest. So this tells us that this event happening happens after that, okay? Then it says, the end has come upon my people. Meaning, God has looked, he has no more grace. He's like, that's it, I'm pulling the pin. We're gonna take the, the good people off the earth and leave whoever's left. Then it says, I will not pass by them anymore. This is very strong, because if you look at Psalm 14, two and three, it says, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who do good, no, not one. Then in 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12, it's speaking to Christians and it says, and it says, therefore, beloved, I beg you as a sojourner and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. The day of visitation is the day that God looks down and says, okay, who, who's ready? And then he raptures up all the people that are actually ready. So if you were left behind after this point in the day of visitation, you were too much into your fleshly lusts and you were not righteous. You were not sanctified. So go back and watch those videos on my account if you have no idea what that I'm talking about. Okay, then it says in verse four, why these people were left behind besides just that they're not righteous. They're complainers. They don't even care about what God cares about because it says when the new moon will be passed that we may sell grain and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat, making the FF small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit. They're bad people. They don't care about the holidays and the observances of the Lord. So basically anything that the Lord tells you to do, you're like, I just, okay, I might muscle through it and do it, but I just want to get to the next thing. I want to make my money. I want to go do my thing. And then they're deceitful. Okay, so that tells you why they're left behind. And then it says in that day, what will happen? They're going to mourn. They're going to be sad. That's verse 10. Then verse 11. This is important. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. So we've got a rapture. We've got the people that are left behind and why. And then we've got... Um, the event that tells us this is happening is that darkness event. And then it says there's a famine of hearing of the Lord. How do we know? Well, no one's Christian left on the earth. So that is the darkness also. When that kind of thick darkness that God put into Egypt, and then it's going to reoccur in Revelation, that there's no good in it. It's all evil and it's all scary. And that's why the people that weren't so evil were super scared. They were like, this is freaking me out. And it's a precursor to hell. It's kind of like, if you like this, you'll probably like the next chapter of your life in hell. But if you don't like this, you might want to think about choosing God. <laughs> okay. So how do we also know this is in the right order? Just after this chapter, chapter eight of Amos eight, right? Is Amos 9. What is Amos 9? Jacob's trouble. Everyone knows the rapture happens right before Jacob's trouble because Jacob has to go through all this period of time where they get their little hineys kicked until they go, huh, I guess God is God. Okay, then we've got this noon is parallel with Job 5, the one I read at the beginning. It says these wise that are getting caught in their craftiness, they meet with darkness in the daytime and they grope at noontime as the night he saves the needy from the sword. Who's the needy? The needy are the rebels that are not white haired and they go into safe houses. That's the needy. Okay. Now regarding the ones with white hair who are hunting the people to bring them to the Antichrist. There's also a verse I was pressed to give you for that. Micah 7. It says the good man has perished from the earth. And you need to understand that in the Hebrew perished is a bod, which means vanished. He's not dead. He disappeared. Okay, so the good man has disappeared from the earth and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. That talks about the people who are going to get other men because God calls all of us people. It doesn't matter what our color, race, whatever is. 
we're all brothers, okay? Because we're all in the human thing. We're not in the animal thing, and we're not in the angel thing. So they're going to get their brothers with a net, meaning they're going to collect them. Why? Verse 3 and 4 tell us why. That they may successfully do evil with both hands. The prince, the Antichrist, asks for gifts. The judge, the people who are going to help make them um, guilty and make sure that they get slaughtered, um, seeks a bribe. The men, the great men, utter his evil desires. Who are the great men? Those are the people influencing everyone. So they scheme together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorned hedge. The day of your watchman and your punishment comes. Now shall be their perplexity. Then verse 5 talks to us about the people who are left that are not white-haired. These are the emotions and the realities they're going to be dealing with. Verse 5, do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth, can't say the wrong thing, from her who lies in your bosom. Then in verse 6, it repeats what happened in Luke 1235 when Jesus was explaining the end times and how father will be divided against father and mother against mother. Why? Because they will have to choose Christ or what's legal, Christ or what's popular. Okay. So in verse six, it says for son dishonors father for daughter rises against her mother, daughter in law against her mother in law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. So the people in the household are going to be turning in the one Christian or the two Christians and be like, oh my gosh, they converted, take them, go kill them. Because they, why, 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 why? Because they want to have all the cool stuff. They want to live in the nicer house. They want to be taken care of. They don't want to be slaughtered. Oh my gosh, what if I'm slaughtered? Then in verse seven, it says, therefore, I will look to the Lord and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Who's saying that? Who's saying that are the people who have found him. The rebels that turned into hiders that accepted the gospel and are like 1000% behind God and like, yes, that's my guy. That's who's saying that. So their eyes are fixed on God. This shows, that statement shows they have a hundred percent trust in the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. God will hear me. They know that. All right. So back to the prophecy. I will have mercy on all who come to me in these times. They will be spared with my own in the judgment to follow. The gospel will be spread quickly among the rebels. Those who do not come to me will be found and turned into a slave labor force until needed for human sacrifice. The Antichrist will promise luxurious accommodations and food and money to these who bring the hiders to him. A few will receive the accommodations as presented as social bait to motivate others. Man will turn against man to achieve these accommodations. Man will also turn in any hiders they see or know of in hopes for self-preservation. This will be a dark time. When the mark of the beast is global, which will be mere moments after the worldwide rapture, the separation will be final. Those who choose willingly to go and receive the mark of the beast and swear their allegiance to the Antichrist, those will all be marked for wrath. Those men and women will be completely altered and all filled with evil. All things wicked, perverse, evil, and debaucherous will all be normalized. Like-minded people will band together. Those that like the same type of debauchery will live together in communities that allow and promote the type of sin they prefer. They will all be slaves and work consistently to be sure the Antichrist lives well while they are kept at survival levels with just enough food and income to keep them working. There will be continual hatred and murders between people. Just as heaven will be everything good and nothing bad of this life, those within the new cities will have the opposite. Everything bad and difficult about this life and nothing good, kind or right. It will be a terrible time, a precursor to the misery of hell. Do not take part in this misery on earth. The deceiver wishes to promise and then entrap as many as he can collect. Choose me. Be provided for. Become part of my family. The witness and benefactors to my amazing love and miracles and provisions while on this earth. Things are about to change. Like dominoes stacked 
able to fall one upon another, the first is about to fall. Get under my wing before the evil hits with full force. I am mercy. Trust me. I will provide a life way beyond that which you can properly imagine. But you must come to me with full faith, God. Okay, so that's the end of this one. I got another one in the same day, and I'm going to put that one up as soon as I can. So hope that's encouraging, and see you next time.